why don't you pick that item up? Is a question I hear the most during my streams and in my comments on YouTube. So today I'm going over my philosophy of macro itemization and management, the key to how I so often get powerful runs in Risk of Rain 2. I do want to be clear though, this isn't a beginner's guide for how to build characters up with items. That's something I expect you to know or at least be aware of already while watching this. You don't have many tools to utilize player agency when it comes to items, but the few you have are important. Scrappers, printers, and recyclers are your bread and butter. These are the easiest ways to change items from one thing to another. These are the tools that let you bypass an element of RNG, but sometimes the secret sauce is a little patient. Let's go over some hypotheticals. You spawn into a stage and see a printer you want. Do you immediately start checking items in it with no scrap? What if you lose all the really good items you have that are making your build powerful? What if you end up making your build actually worse by using a printer here at random? Do you scout the stage a bit and look for a scrapper so you don't lose the important parts of your build? Of course, you look for the scrapper. You want as much of a positive impact on your build as possible. Well, I do the same thing with cards and recyclers. Let's say, for example, the almighty Aegis drops. Stage five, no healing in sight. Not a single healing item anywhere in the build whatsoever. Do I take this item that doesn't affect my build at all? Do I squander all the potential this red item drop contains and simply pick it up? No. The red pool is full of powerful and incredibly game-changing items. Why wouldn't I want the chance to tap into that power? Why wouldn't I want to just wait for a single minute or two, move on, and loot the rest of the stage before I come back to it just to see if a recycler is here somewhere, before I pick up something that doesn't affect my build at all? throwing away the, all the potential just run out of the window. I'd rather have the chance of something like a Clover or a Behemoth. And hey, if the Recycler never shows up, just go pick up the Aegis before you leave anyway. Since it didn't affect your build at all, waiting a few minutes did no harm to you. And a preemptive next question, yes, this situation arises constantly. Recyclers do show up. I have to go as far as waiting a few moments to pick up unfortunate greens as well. If you see a beautiful multi-shot filled with ATGs, would you immediately grab one? Wasting the two other ATGs? What about the other multi-shops on the stage that you're throwing away too? Or would you scout around a bit, looking for an equipment barrel with a card in it? What if? If you know there's a chance for a good boss item drop from the teleporter like a Shatter Spleen or Little Disciple, would you hit the teleporter and hope? I would look around for a Trophy Hunter's Tricorn. On the opposite side of the coin, what if I found a Tricorn on a stage with bad bosses? Would I use the gun here to get a boss item that doesn't affect my run at all? Or do I wait a stage or two and maybe even dream for a stage with good bosses in the bazaar? Most of the examples can be boiled down into searching through your equipment barrels before making most decisions. Before you pick up that item you don't want. Before you hit the teleporter that could have a good boss. Before you open that multi-shop that has a ton of good items. That's a 1 in 25 chance every barrel or equipment multi-shop to get the thing that you need for that situation. Keep taking those chances before giving up to RNG. But let's go back to the first example. Cool printer, no scrap. What if you never found a scrap for that stage? Well, you still have options available to you. When I see a cool printer, I abstain from picking up items that I want from that tier of items on the stage until I'm done scrapping. Let's say you have a tri-tip dagger print on the stage and a hoof drops from a chest and you really want both. Do you pick it up and include it into the pool of items the printer can take from? No, of course you don't. You pick up all the bison stakes and the other items that aren't important to you so you can dilute the list of items the printer takes from with trash, and then simply pick up the items you want to keep afterwards. Now we have bleed and a hoof, and hopefully we kept some of our other items that we wanted before that too. Patience, easy. Likewise, the same concept can be taken into consideration with dealing with cauldrons on the moon or in the bazaar, filling up your inventory with undesirable items. So let's say you have a green cauldron you really want. Maybe it's that band or feather that's just been missing from your build, but you can't afford to give up many of your white items, especially not at random. Well, you have some red scrap in your inventory, right? Use that on one of the white cauldrons, fill up your inventory with the white item you don't need before dipping into the green cauldron. Tip the scales in your favor. You can do this with white scrap and the green items to help with red cauldron chances too. Another popular question I often get is why don't I open the void key box when I see it? Why do I often walk past it and even move on to the next stage without opening it at all? Well, the encrusted key absorbs new rusty keys into it, but once you use them all up, any new rusty keys will just be the old white rusty key. I want as many void items as I can get, especially when I have the option of choosing one of three in the void key menu. I often wait until I have two encrusted keys in my inventory for this reason, 
before opening the box so I can keep cloning the key over and over and over and getting more void items. If I can't find a dupe key, I move on to the next stage. You getting that void item now or later doesn't matter. You're still going to get it eventually. What matters is whether or not you get one void item or many. This one requires a lot of patience, but it's definitely worth it. There's a neat little trick you can pull off with equipment and recyclers too. This one is very obscure and it's not really obvious, but since so many of our macro tools are equipment based, it's really important we cover it. When your equipment drops on the ground and you recycle it, it recycles the position of the item. Let's explain what that means. Let's say you have a jade elephant on the ground and you recycle into a samurai. Notice you can't recycle that item again, obviously. But even if you swapped the equipment with any other equipment on the stage, that spot where you recycle the elephant cannot be rerolled anymore, even if it's an equipment that you had never rerolled prior. Also, by moving the saw to another unrolled position, you can reroll that saw again into something else. And you can do this as many times as you want, assuming you have enough equipment positions available on your stage. This way you can save equipments on a map while cycling through others. Let's say you want to keep that tricorn for the teleporter, but are still looking for a card to use, start juggling your equipment spots. There are a ton of ways you can go about using these principles and ideas of macro itemization, and even more we haven't gone over, like picking avoid items later so you can scrap their seeded items, for example. But these are a great start to making you a more consistent and thoughtful player when it comes to macro management. I hope you enjoyed, and thanks for watching, and best of luck.